Fire is a perfect example of what rags to riches really mean. Growing up in a house of prostitution to becoming a multi Grammy winner. I used to always want to sing myself. Did you ever want to sing anybody? You know? No, I, I tried, but the dudes used to always say, lay out. <laughs> no, you ever try to sing on the block? No, no offense. <laughs> no, when dudes used to be hanging around just to be singing, you know, you have a little wine or something, you know. Like, ooh, ah, ooh, ooh, ooh. Wait a minute. Remember, there was a song, man, dudes used to love to sing like, Pryor had the humblest of beginnings. He was born in Peria, Illinois on the 1st of December, 1940. At his childhood, it would be impossible to imagine what he was to offer the world a child of a prostitute. Unfortunately for Pryor, bad things kept coming his way. At the age of seven, he was molested by a teenage neighbor and again by a Catholic priest. This alone would be enough for a bad childhood for Pryor. However, it kept getting worse for the young boy. His mother, Richard L. May Thomas, abandoned him at the age of 10. Moreover, due to a minor incident, he was expelled at school when he was only 14 years old. Pryor was introduced to the life of performing by Juliet Whitaker through a cast in a local production of Rampy Feleskian. Juliet was pleased by his performance and so believed in him. She went on encouraging him throughout his career. Pryor would proceed on from there working minor jobs such as a janitor at a local strip club, a shoe shine, a drummer, and a truck driver. He even served in the U.S. Army from 1958 to 1960, according to Richard Pryor's official website. Pryor started performing in comedy clubs throughout the Midwest. In 1963, he traveled to New York and persisted with his career as a stand-up comedian. He gained fame and eventually he was performing with performers such as Bobby Dylan, Rich Havens, and the iconic Woody Allen. In contrast with his controversial work that later got him famous, Richard performed Mid Pro Comic, which was inspired by Bill Cosby. He would go on gaining more fame, being featured on TV shows such as Broadway Tonight, The McGriven Show, The Ed Sullivan Show, and The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson. During this period, he also had a glimpse of the big screen by playing minor roles in movies such as The Bushy Body, 1967, and Wild in the Streets, 1968. At the same time, he also released his first self-titled comedy album. Even though Pryor had a good career on middle pro comic, he decided to let it go. Pryor knew that this wasn't him. He was good at imitating other people, but he needed his own voice. An event in 1969 led to something that Richard himself described as an epiphany. During a show in Alidiana Hotel, Pryor walked on stage 
looked around and exclaimed over the microphone, What the f am I doing here? and so walked off the stage. Thereafter, Pryor changed his comedy to a more storytelling and controversial way. He started to include the word nigger in his performances and shows. This was a good change for Pryor as it boosted his career drastically. Richard won a shared Emmy Award for comedy writing for the Lil Tom Line special, 1973. He also wrote for shows such as The Flip Wilson Show and Stanford and Sir, which starred comedian Red Fox. He also released his third album, That Nigga's Crazy. Pryor was the first black guest host on the show Saturday Night Live. He also did his own variety show. The Richard Pryor show. Unfortunately, it was cancelled after only four episodes. Pryor was addicted to cocaine and alcohol. He said, one day at a party, a girl introduced him to cocaine. He tried it and kind of liked it. After that dose, Pryor said he kept asking for more. Why mess around with TV where you got restrictions and executives? Two million dollars. <laughs> That'll do it, I guess, yeah. That'll do it. Well, I thought, you know, I, I checked this out with... Uh, I was going to have a chart on the show. Uh, they wouldn't let me have it. I was going to have a chart. Uh, I was telling someone else this. I was going to have a chart to show that as the shows got worse, my money got larger. You know, <laughs> call it integrity chart. So, uh, integrity three, money 12. I got it. <laughs> The uh, I, I, the television thing, you know, a lot of people said it was canceled, and the show wasn't canceled. You know, we only did four shows, and that was our intent because it's really, it's hard work trying to do something and people telling you you can't. It must be tough, you, you know, know, looking so, over your shoulder. Like and, and, and they lie. Grown men lie to you, to your face. Like what? For, can you give me an example? Go. Well, we'll fix that. It's not our fault. <laughs> and I'll be right back. I'll be with you Wednesday. We'll talk about it. And then they'll go to somebody else, fix it, you know, make sure that doesn't get on, okay? Don't tell him I said so. <laughs> right? And then, uh, then they look you in the face, and I want to hit him in the face, you know? <laughs> and you can't do that because the court, they sue you now. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's this new thing. Yeah, $60,000 for a left hook. It's not worth it. <laughs> no. well, and know. plus, you might get dusted, too. And it's very embarrassing, <laughs> you know? You don't always win them fights when you be hit. No. It's very embarrassing to have an old white man whoop you at NBC. <laughs> in 1980, Pryor had another epiphany. Whilst free basing on cocaine, Pryor dosed himself in drum and set himself on fire. He was taken to the hospital and was able to recover after suffering third degree burns and more than 50% of his body. The failed suicide attempt was a symbol for Pryor. A while after, he stopped using drugs and alcohol and was clean ever since. Pryor also had a problem with women. He was married seven times to five different women. Pryor would physically abuse them. In his later life, he blamed his actions to his addiction to drugs and alcohol. Nevertheless, he married Jennifer Lee once again and so repented from his abusive behavior. Pryor told Larry on Larry King Live that he is not proud of his behavior and that there is nothing we can do about the past. We just have to live with it and try not to repeat our mistakes. Pryor persisted with his career after the free busing accident. In 1982, he released a comedy show titled Richard Pryor Live on Sunset Strip in which he included a description of his free busing accident. Nevertheless, he joked about it. Again, he released another comedy album titled Richard Pryor Here and Now, 1983. He also wrote and directed the movie Jojo Dancer, Your Life is Calling which is a fictionalized account of his life. Good. Okay. Richard Pryor's here tonight. I think Richard Pryor is probably the funniest 
funniest man. It would embarrass him for me to say this while he was sitting here, I know him, but I think he's one of the true geniuses working comedy today. He's not only thinks funny, he's a skilled comedy actor, and he's got a great string of movies out in recent years, and now he's co-starring in Superman 3, Richard Pryor. <laughs> That was funny, man. That, that was, was all right, huh? Yeah, I like that. Coming from you, okay. If you thought that was funny, I'll buy that. How you doing? I'm great. I feel wonderful. Yeah, you're looking good. Thank you very much. Yeah. So happy to be here, Johnny. <laughs> 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 How you doing, Nick? Good. Yeah. Yeah. good. See, I, I don't know what's going on, though. Yeah. I don't... I, I, I'm at home, you know, and, and, and I've, I've been here now about six months. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, I haven't been back to Hawaii. I'm going next week, but I've been here, and I watch television here. I don't watch in Hawaii much. And I turn on TV, and I watch, and I go, hmm, that's, that's good. <laughs> and I, I don't understand. I don't get it. I mean, I see, I see the President Reagan on TV talking, and I don't get angry or nothing. Most people be angry. I, I just go, hmm. <laughs> I wonder who lets him on. <laughs> you know, I, I say to myself, I said, if this man was standing on the street corner talking like he's talking, you'd go, excuse me. Because <laughs> they, they're, talking, they, they, they're talking about, now they're talking about something real dangerous. They're talking about nuclear missiles. Yeah. I mean, they're talking about messing up all our Sundays. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? I mean, if you don't have that uniform on, you're going to be a statue. <laughs> Do you ever see that stuff that the, uh, the soldiers have it? You know, them suits. And I don't have one in my closet. Yeah. Oh, the radiation suit, you mean? Yeah. yeah. I mean, no, if I you don't... ain't got one of those... <laughs> yeah, pigeon park time, I mean. You know, and I'm not mad at no Russians at all. I want the Russians to know. Richard Pryor, I'm not mad at y'all. <laughs> Nothing personal. You know, know no Russians. <laughs> you know, if I walk down the street, if he don't have on that hat, I ain't gonna know him. That's right. <laughs> oh. Hey, George, how you doing? I'm sweaty, brother. What is it? Oh, I gotta tell you something. I was watching the other night. I had never seen some kind of hero, that uh -huh. picture you did. Uh -huh. I saw it on cable the other night. You had me laughing so hard, I almost wanted to call you and tell you. I was hysterical. Yeah. He comes back from the war, <laughs> from the Vietnamese War. You find out that your wife has been see, seeing another guy. Yes. They take all your money and they've spent it. Yes. You find out your mother is in a convalescent home. Yes. <laughs> and you got a scene where you go to the psychiatrist. And the, you're sitting there. The psychiatrist says, now, we don't want to push psychiatry on anybody if we don't think you need it. He says, now, do you think you have any major problems? <laughs> well, he sat there and didn't say a word and started to giggle. You just, it was one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life. Oh, thank you. Said, do you have any major problems? You just went, <laughs> <laughs> and then the doctor, you just stood there and laughed for two minutes. Yeah. God, it was a funny scene. Thank you very much. I yeah. wish more people had seen it. <laughs> <laughs> it was a wonderful thing. It was wonderful. Pryor signed a $40 million contract with Columbia Pictures thereby starting his own production company, Indigo Productions. He also starred on Superman 3, where he earned $4 million, an amount greater than the one earned by the movie star. He also got a lead role with Gana Wilder on See No Evil, Hear No Evil. Pryor was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis in 1986 which left him bound to a power-operated mobility scooter. However, he persisted with his career even. Pryor went on, appearing on the movie Hamlet Nights, 1989, which starred Eddie Murphy and Red Fox. He was also the first recipient of the Mark Twain Award, 1986. On the 10th of December, 2005, in Los Angeles, Richard Pryor died of a heart attack.
an interesting life he had through a rough childhood to success. To drug addict and finally to greatness. <laughs>